Hi, I'm Emily Riley. I just finished my freshman year at the University of South Dakota. I'm a Jesus-loving, coffee-drinking, John Party-listening, Chinese food-obsessed, curly-headed weirdo. I've accomplished a lot of things in life already and plan on continuing to reach my goals. I think I'm pretty cool. I'm a friend, daughter, granddaughter, great-granddaughter, niece, great-niece, cousin, and most importantly, I'm a sister. That last one is one of my favorite ways to describe who I am as a person. My definition of normal might be pretty different than yours. My normal consists of one-sided conversations, the Wiggles soundtrack, constant routine, and out-of-this-world hugs. I understand the importance of clipping hangnails, closing all of the cabinet doors, and turning off all of the lights at night except for the bathroom. Picky eating is taken to the next level, blowing your nose is not practice, and sleeping requires a pillow pet or no pillow at all. My normal is having a brother with autism. I want my normal to be part of your normal. I want you to know why I have three pairs of fingernail clippers in my dorm. I want you to know why we keep a running dialogue when we're out running errands. I want you to know anything and everything about my normal so that you're more comfortable with who we are as a family and who my brother Matthew is as an individual. Being comfortable creates an environment of acceptance, which is all we strive for. My sweet little brother was diagnosed with autism when he was about two and a half years old. I was around five years old. Being so young myself, I don't remember a time before his diagnosis, which really doesn't change a thing at all. Of course, life with Matthew was different, but for me, it's hard to distinguish what is normal for other people because Matthew was my normal. I didn't know anything else. My parents have not let Matthew's diagnosis affect the big things in our life. Growing up, I was able to participate in anything I wanted and my entire family would be there to support me. Looking at Matthew from a distance, or even up close really, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell that he is autistic. It's not something you can just see by looking at his physical appearance. Now spend more than five seconds with him and it becomes quite obvious. Greetings and other common phrases are scripted and used only as prompted. Noises, humming, and cartoon phrases are constant. Having a routine is so important for him. Without it, he becomes anxious or even upset. If he knows what is happening around him, he is perfectly fine. I mean, how do you feel being thrown into a new social situation that you don't know everything about? It can be kind of scary, huh? When Matthew does become upset, it can be very intimidating for people, especially those who do not know him. Matthew is a sturdy six feet, four inches tall, he is by no means little. However, Matthew would not hurt a fly. When he gets upset, it's much like a two-year-old's tantrum. He gets loud and flings his arm around. He may hit himself, but he will not hit you. There's not a ton that can be done once he's in this meltdown state, but to wait it out or remove him from whatever situation is taking place. This really doesn't happen very often as he is our gentle giant who would much rather feel the pressure of a hug and can be easily persuaded with food or his iPad. One of Matthew's defense mechanisms is laying down on the floor. When he was little, this wasn't an issue as we could just scoop him up and continue on our way. Now it's a little bit more difficult. As Matthew's sister, one of the things that bothers me is when we are out in public and Matthew does something that is not in some form of someone else's normal, we can get funny looks. This hurts me because I know that Matthew can't help it and the lack of understanding in others is creating a judgment on us. Growing up in small town Iowa, everyone has always been accepting of Matthew by showing him friendship and respect. I relate this directly back to people being comfortable and used to our normal. My family has worked so hard to make sure that Matthew is known and that pieces of his normal have become part of the normal of those around him. Matthew has inspired me to be the best I can be. I work hard to achieve my goals not only for myself, but for him. Growing up with Matthew, I was introduced to the world of speech and language pathology. I found a passion for what they do, and I am now pursuing to become a speech and language pathologist myself. I am excited to be going into a career that will help many people and even some who are a lot like Matthew.